an airline flight carrying a great deal of explosives requests permission to fly over the most crime-ridden city in the world. Gotham Tower employees think that's just fine, and tell them to go on ahead. An enemy helicopter lands on the plane's roof, and several characters break into its belly. Captain Dale is sent to investigate, and he's quickly tossed out. The Joker appears beside the blissful pilot, but even after he announces his identity, and plans to take over Gotham using the plane, the pilot doesn't seem scared at all. In fact, he's skeptical the Joker will even succeed, because Batman has always stopped him in the past. The Joker swears that this time is different, and this is his best plan yet. He names villains that are constantly attacking Gotham. The pilot thinks he made some of those names up, but the Joker insists they're real and might be worth a Google. The Joker adds that he already took out the bat signal, and all the villains are on the loose to help him win this time. Chaos erupts in the city, and the police can't reach Batman on the phone. Joker gets Commissioner Gordon on the phone, and tells him there's an unnecessarily complicated bomb being attached to the inside of the main energy core. If the mayor doesn't negotiate the city's surrender in five minutes, he will destroy Gotham. Another man demonstrates how the city is actually built on block-like structures that create an empty space underneath them that's dark and gross and smells like underwear. If the city is blown up, everything will crumble down. Since they can't reach Batman, the mayor is sent flying, attached to a helicopter to the Joker's location. The Joker is surprised to find out Batman is disguised as the mayor. The Joker says he's crazy because he's obviously outnumbered, but Batman proceeds to kick their butts easily while singing about it. He fights one-on-one -on -one with Joker, refusing to let him escape. The Joker tells him he must choose between saving the city by defusing the bomb or catching his greatest enemy. Batman challenges the thought that the Joker is his greatest enemy, saying that Bane and Superman irritate him the most. Batman swears he doesn't do relationships with anyone, and there is nothing between them. He lets the broken-hearted Joker go, and defuses the bomb just before it blows. A huge celebration erupts and Batman thrives on the attention. He makes a special visit to the orphans to give them Batman merchandise and tell them to take care of their abs if they want to be like him. The password Ironman sucks gives him permission to enter the Batcave on Wayne Island. He speaks with a voice computer like it's his good friend. His collection of confiscated tools of destruction has grown by one. He got four pieces of junk mail and is told that Alfred is doing tile work on the 17th floor. Instead of letting him know he's home, Batman changes into his robe to fetch his gourmet dinner and eat alone. He plays guitar on the water and watches a movie in his home theater, cracking up in laughter at the iconic love scene. He starts to feel alone. He speaks with his deceased parents by looking at a picture of them on the wall. Alfred sneaks up on him and becomes a victim of Batman's quick reflexes. He recovers and tries to talk to Batman about how he might be feeling, since he's noticed he may be going through a phase, like he has many times in his past. Batman says he is a night-stalking, crime-fighting vigilante, and a heavy metal wrapping machine. The only emotion he has is rage, all the time. He refuses to admit that he's afraid of becoming part of a family again. Alfred gives up for now but reminds him he has to go to Commissioner Gordon's retirement party. It's a good thing Batman loves tuxedo fashion shows, because that convinces him to get ready. On the way to the party, he watches Superman's TV interview with Disdain. The Joker watches the same interview while he sulks about Batman dumping him. Superman talks about having to put Zod in the Phantom Zone, where he could never escape. This, along with Harley Quinn's advice about making Batman miss fighting him, gives him an idea. Bruce Wayne arrives at the party full of himself, saying as long as the new commissioner knows how to hit the bat signal, he'll be okay. He meets with an orphan named Richard Grayson, who appreciates his time more than Bruce realizes. Richard asks him if he has any advice on how to get adopted, and he jots down his answers. When Bruce sees the new commissioner, he is smitten. He tells Richard about the qualities he'd want his prospective adoptee to have, but he isn't in the conversation. He's staring at the new commissioner. Richard happens to be a lot of the things Bruce says he's looking for in a son. He asks if Mr. Wayne might consider adopting him, and he says yes just before disappearing unexpectedly. The new commissioner is well-educated and talented. Barbara Gordon graciously accepts an oversized key to the city and the button for the bat signal. She introduces new ideas to help reduce crime in the city, because Batman has failed to actually capture any of notorious villains. Bruce is stunned. He objects and takes the time to give himself a proper introduction before asking her what she has against Batman. She goes on to explain that they simply need to take what's good about Batman and marry it to actual laws and practices that will work. Just then, she notices something odd and so does Bruce Wayne. They order everyone to get down and the Joker enters with all the other villains. All the exits are blocked and Jim Gordon tries to tell Barbara to let Batman handle it but she's far too skilled and helpful to sit back and watch. Bruce escapes and changes into his Batman suit, building a massive battle machine before coming face to face with the bad guys. He interrupts Barbara's confrontation, only for the Joker to surrender. It's extremely suspicious and no one is sure what's happening. The Joker explains that Batman won't be able to fight him or anyone anymore because they're all surrendering. 
Batman is interviewed and asked what he'll be doing for the rest of his life. He is mortified. As everyone celebrates the drop in crime, Batman is dejected and lonely. He has nothing to do besides spy on the villains in prison. Barbara checks on him, but he's unwilling to work with her and says the Joker should be in the Phantom Zone. He retreats to the Batcave and finds that Alfred has changed the password on his computer. He tells Batman that now is the time for him to start living and change the course of his life, and he can start by raising his son. Batman has no clue what he's talking about, so Alfred reminds him that he adopted the orphan boy Richard at the party, and he's been exploring Wayne Manor. He has a lot in common with Bruce, having lost his parents at a young age too. Alfred opens a secret entrance to the Batcave for Richard to enter. He geeks out about it, but Batman isn't so thrilled. He tells Richard that Bruce Wayne residence in Batman's attic and the only thing he can touch is the Bat Shark repellent. Batman then looks up how to throw the Joker into the Phantom Zone for which he will need the Phantom Zone projector. This is kept in Superman's Fortress of Solitude. The computer also warns him that he will need to be very small to get through certain areas, that it's very dangerous, and that the chance he will fail is 110%. Accepting that those odds aren't too great, he notices that his new son is quite small and expendable, so he asks him to come with him for the mission. While Batman prepares, Richard tries on different costumes, settling on Batman's old Reggae Man outfit. For fear he may not be able to kick well, he rips off the pants and calls the costume complete. Before leaving, Batman tells Richard that he has shared custody of him with Bruce, so he has permission to go with him on missions. Richard is thrilled, claiming it's raining dads. They arrive at Superman's fortress, and Batman tells Richard that Superman enjoys his solitude like him. He coaches Richard through different moves and sends him off to find where the Phantom Zone projector is. Batman rings the doorbell and pushes past Superman to find that they're having the 5th anniversary Justice League party without him. Superman invites him to stay, but it's clear he doesn't feel like he belongs with the crowd. He calls the kid and joins him in fighting through obstacles to access the Phantom Zone projector. He tells Richard the exact moves to do as he navigates the obstacle. Once the mission is accomplished, Batman gets help from the computer identifying the emotion he feels, which is proud. Seeing Richard was like seeing a smaller version of himself, which leads Batman to conclude that he must be a great teacher. On the way to Commissioner Gordon's, Batman offers Richard unlimited cookies and tells him vigilantes don't have bedtimes. They arrive stealthily at Arkham Asylum and Barbara greets them, allowing them in on the pretext that they're working together. Security discovers that Richard is smuggling in the Phantom Zone project and they are forced to fight through security. When Batman finds his cell, the Joker tells him he must be his greatest enemy. This makes Batman hesitate, but he shoots him anyway, for the safety of the city. He and Richard are arrested, and Barbara tells Batman he can't be a hero if he only cares about himself. She wonders if Batman just gave the Joker exactly what he wanted. The Joker meets villains even worse than he is, but they agree to help him humiliate Batman and destroy Gotham if he finds them all the way out of there. Harley Quinn grabs the Phantom Zone projector before it can be locked away and shoots the sky to release all the Phantom Zone villains. The Eye of Sauron scans the city and informs the Joker that the Batcave is under Wayne Manor, insinuating Batman's true identity. The Joker, along with several other villains, pay a visit to the island and make themselves at home in the Batcave. Batman raps with his adopted son in their Arkham Asylum cells to help him calm down until he gets a bat fax from his helmet. Barbara appears to tell him the city needs him, but she'll only let him out if he agrees to work with other people. He hesitates, but doesn't really have a choice. His new teammates are Barbara, Richard, and Alfred. As soon as they leave Arkham Asylum, it's mass chaos. They can hardly find a safe place to stand, but together they manage to build a flying craft. Batman only installs one seat, because old habits die hard. Wayne Manor has become Joker Island, and they are greeted with heavy fire. As the engines and wings are shot down, Richard tells his dad he needs to go number one. As they narrowly crash, the number one issue is solved, but Batman still insists he doesn't need help. He puts the plane on autopilot with a rope, naming it in charge while he's gone. The three friends decide he needs help, whether he'll admit it or not. Richard and Alfred help him eliminate some of the threats, but they each run into trouble. Batman does everything he can to save them, but he needs Barbara's help to fly the plane to catch Alfred. Once they get back on the ship, Batman says the rope saved Alfred, but the computer tells him that Barbara did, and he takes a moment to consider that without Barbara, Alfred would have fallen. Accepting their help, they manage to take down the all-seeing eye. In a moment of celebration, they take a selfie together and it looks awfully similar to another picture. Batman has a few moments of intense emotion and isn't sure how to handle it. He calls them a happy fraternity of people, for lack of a better term. He tricks them into getting on the ship so that he can fly them to a safer place. He's devastated because he loves them. He confronts the Joker in what used to be Bruce Wayne's house. Joker tells Batman all he wanted was for him to admit he hated him as much as he did, and that they had a meaningful relationship. Since Batman refuses to admit his true feelings for Joker, he is sent to the Phantom Zone. 
There, he's confronted with all the times he failed to show love and connection to the people around him. Brick Lady says he abandoned his friends and pushed them away. He says it was to protect them, but she asks if maybe he was only protecting himself. As things become extremely dire for his family in Gotham, Batman begs her to send him back so that he can put a stop to what's happening. Brick Lady has trouble believing he'll do anything different, because he always does the same thing. Batman swears that he'll return to her in 24 hours, and return the other villains to the Phantom Zone if she lets him go back to save his family. He arrives in the nick of time to get them all out of immediate danger, and he finally gets the chance to tell them how he really feels. He says he pushed them away and returned for the same reason, because he's afraid of losing them. He finally admits that he cares about them all deeply and needs their help to protect Gotham, and even made them each their own call buttons. They're all very happy and proud of Batman. All of the villains in Arkham Asylum are called too, to help restore order to Gotham. Barbara gets her Batgirl costume and asks if she can call him Batboy. As they battle, Batman takes the opportunity to teach his son how to drive and how to fight. They take turns zapping villains back to the Phantom Zone. Richard finally got to use his Bat Shark repellent. Before Batman has a chance to disarm the bomb, it explodes and the city literally starts to fall apart. Using the brainstorming help of his friends and family, he tells them they'll use their heads to build a bridge and put the city back together. Realizing they can't reach, he begs the Joker to help them. He says that without him, he wouldn't have the motivation to get up every morning and work out his abs. He wouldn't have realized how close he was to all the people around him, including the Joker himself. He says he needs him and begs him to help save all of them, meaning Batman and the Joker together. Joker happily agrees, and as they link hands and pull the city back together with the citizens of the city, Batman finally tells the Joker he hates him. It's a massive celebration of expressed emotion. But then, Richard sees Batman about to leave for the Phantom Zone. Batman shows him he's his dad, and expresses love and appreciation to all three of the people dearest to him. He floats back to the Phantom Zone, but slaps against a closed window. Barbara catches him, and the Brick Lady arrives to give Batman the reason for his rejection. During her career, she saw a lot of really bad villains, but today she finally saw a man that made the world a better place. By taking an honest look at himself and making a change, it's a happily ever after for him and his new family. They return to Wayne Manor and do all the things Bruce enjoyed doing alone, only it's much better now.